I'd been following Jim's instructions and sitting in my car waiting for his call. After a few hours and several attempts to call him to no avail, I really had to pee. I got Johnny out of the car and we walked to the gas station on the main road. I picked up a sandwich and some chicken for Johnny and we made our way back. The hazmat people seemed completely uninterested in what I was doing. We were still scurrying around like ants around the tent. I sat in my car for a few more hours and watched them, but nothing seemed to change. I tried calling Jim every five minutes, but he still wasn't answering. After a day of sitting in my car waiting for something to happen, I got fed up. I wanted answers and a good stretch. I hopped out of the car with new inspiration and let Johnny out. We made our way from the tent and around the back of another factory as to not draw attention to ourselves. The guys from the warehouse were still standing around staring at the tent. I strode up to them with confidence and gestured vaguely to the building they were in. Don't you guys do anything around here? The man I'd talked to before spoke up with a shrug. It's not every day the government comes by and sets up shop. How do you know it's the government? I don't. Just assumed. Who else would be doing all that? He jerked his head towards the tent operation. I turned to look at the tent. I'm not sure. You're not actually homeless, is you? I turned back to him, offended. Of course not. I have a home. I just don't know how to get back to it. I let my eyes fall to the ground. The severity of my situation finally enveloping me. I may never get home. I may never see Jackie again. My eyes started to tear up and I sniffled. The man held up a decisive hand. Hey now, you lost something? I didn't look at him, tears falling down my face. Somehow, reality broke and I'm stuck in a wrong dimension and everyone I love is in the other one and I just want to get home and... He placed a hand on my shoulder. I'll help get you home. I blinked at him in surprise and wiped the tears from my face. I just told you I'm from another reality. Are you gonna help me? Just like that. He shrugged. My mama always told me to help strangers in distress. Name's Kev. He held out a hand with a toothy grin and I shook it. Michael. A buzzer sounded from within their warehouse and Kev's buddy started to walk off. He yelled out to them. You guys ain't even gonna offer help to this poor guy? One of them called back. Time to knock off, man. I ain't about to let no homeless dude interrupt my evening. Kev spat on the ground in their direction. Worthless low lives. He turned to me. So, how do we get you home? I rattled off the story in run-on sentences. The temp agency, the building disappearing, Jim being dead and not dead. The reality shift, the tent, and what seemed like five minutes of talking without stopping to take a breath. And Kev never once interrupting. I finished the story and just stared at him. He just nodded his head. Alright then, let's do this. Again, I just blinked at him. You... You don't have any questions. You just believe me. We shrugged again. I got plenty of questions, and whether or not I believe you ain't important. What's important is that you need help, and I'm gonna try my best to get you home. I was impressed. Kev seemed like a really stand-up guy. While I was staring at him in wonder, he had knelt down and was giving Johnny a belly rubs and talking to him in a baby voice. <laughs> well, ain't you the cutest darn thing I've ever seen? Johnny's tail was wagging hard. I unsuccessfully stifled a chuckle. Kev glared at me, and stood up with crossed arms. Shut up. My old lady wouldn't let me get a dog, and he's damn adorable. His features softened. So this gym guy was supposed to call you, but didn't. 
and I'm assuming you need to get inside that tent. I nodded. I think so. Jim needed me to check the forest for anything weird, which is the only reason I came back here. Seems like going in the tent is the only option at this point. Kev tilted his head towards the tent. Think them suits are just going to let us walk in? No idea. Maybe they're friendly? I haven't tried just, you know, saying hi. He was staring at me like I was insane. And I'm still not sure if I'm not. You don't watch enough TV. You don't just walk up to hazmat suit dudes and say hi. We need to sneak in. Steal two of them suits and wait until dark to make our move. It was my turn to think he was insane. We can't just break in. What if we get caught? We don't get caught. Kevin and I made our way to a DQ nearby. Started brainstorming the plan. I was spooning scoops of chocolate shake into my mouth while he talked. We wait until dark. We break into one of the vans closest to my warehouse. We take two of them hazmat suits. Easy peasy. I swallowed the ice cream. How do we even know the vans have suits in them? It could literally be anything else. Kev looked at me like it was obvious. Where else would they be keeping them? I just shrugged and finished my shank. Wasn't much of a plan, but I didn't have a better idea. So, we sat in this DQ and chatted about realities, and Jackie, and his wife, Sandy, until dark. We made our way back to the warehouse, but sadly the second shifters didn't have the garage doors open. There was a van fairly close to us, but still close enough to the tent that it didn't look suspiciously close. We ran to it, half bent over, and Kev tugged on the handles to the back doors. They both popped open with a faint click, and we peered inside. The van had no hazmat suits. Instead, it was full of monitors, with a swivel chair placed in the center. I stepped into the van cautiously to look under the chair. The monitors showed black and white images of what I assumed to be the inside of the tent. There were trees and the hazmat guys running about. The monitor in the center was pointed at a much smaller tent with a huge... Within... The monitor in the center was pointed at a much smaller tent within the huge one. It looked big enough to house three or four standing hazmat men, but it seemed more men were going into that tent than going out of it. I turned to Kev. You see that? How are so many of these dudes fitting in that tent? He was standing in the van, bent over so he could fit. I bet there's some kind of portal in there. A portal? Maybe back to your reality. It could be your way home. I stared at the monitor intently. <sighs> we have to try. <laughs>